So we are finally awake. You are trying to cross the border. Look how good he looks, then look how bad that stamp looks. I don't know why this stamp ticks me off so much. <laughs> Ubisoft pr Is there supposed to be that many people down there? Is that a... <laughs> that seemed like a lot of people down at the shore. More than you would expect in a normal crowd in these games. Yeah, so for the DLC side story for this, they decided to focus on... The historical slavery within the, within the Caribbean. Which, I'm honestly surprised that that kind of storyline and focus didn't get, like, a game of its own, and such. So instead of dual swords, like with Edward, we get a machete that he just finds on the ground. as a story excuse. I don't know why he couldn't have just started the game with a machete, but that works, I guess. But yeah, the dance that we did on the loading screen was the freaking Stylin dance. I can't really see it that well. There's someone being chased. I should probably go save them first and foremost. Oh, I used some of those rope darts on the tutorial ship because I thought it would be like... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was... And then he pushes me. He's just like, oh, get out of here. That's what happens when I do the freaking styling dance. I was thinking about using a rope dart, but I was like, nah, let's not use my consumables. I was about to say how I use those rope darts on the ship being like, oh, it's probably going to take away my inventory after this tutorial thing anyway, the moment we actually get on here, but it didn't, which is surprising. Spooter man. Spooter assassin. I have nothing to offer but thanks. Nothing else is needed. As a boy, I fled the same fate. Why would you risk recapture? Men of principle know the bigger risk is to turn away. I'm looking for Bastian Joseph. Do you know her? Moi même. Pas qu'on elle. But any fine gentleman may lead you to her. Too late for this one. Find another in town. The thanks is now mine. Do you have a place of refuge? My family waits in the mountains. Demon, gemon. Et Dieu soit avec vous. So it looks like, as far as I saw it with the subtitles there, this game doesn't suffer from the same random capitalization like the subtitles of AC4. Which is strange. So they weren't, I guess when they made the subtitles for this game, they weren't smoking something like they were for the freaking AC4 subtitles that have just random capitalization out of nowhere. I should probably get the viewpoint. Uh, it's all the way over. My oh my, I heard your buy that. It's just the blade being rusty than Kaleen when he picked it up. Is a freaking magic sheath that just happens to clean it or something. Like, we're pro... Hmm... We're going right there. We're going right there. What other things do we have? We don't have a gun yet. We don't have a firearm yet. We have darts and stuff. I just want the viewpoint. I remember doing these. We probably don't need to do this right now, but we're doing it anyway. Plantation raids are a good way to liberate many slaves simultaneously. You can find them in your Port of Prince and in the rest of the Caribbean. However, once a plantation has been successfully raided, it will become deserted until a new owner establishes himself in that location. All right. So yeah, the kind of focus of this game is liberating... Slaves and such, you see nothing. I want the view. I guess we'll do that while we're here. I know that there are, you know, requirements to liberate X amount of slaves to, you know, continue with story stuff eventually. Oh, we need to take out 20 overseers anyway. And if I remember from doing the freaking meme run of this before, if you start like open combat, they start going around killing people and then... You can see it shows the number of slaves alive. There are 40. That can decrease if you start causing trouble. So I guess we'll actually try to, you know, stealth it out instead of bum rushing everything. And no. Yeah, I love how you just completely can't see me here. <laughs> like, in the denser bushes in this game, I can understand, like, chilling, hiding in there. But these being completely hidden... It's like, okay, that might be pushing it a little bit, but what you gonna do? 
You've been sabotaged. You've been macheted. All right, so I guess we just got to take out 20 overseers total. Well, smack. We got a chest over here, apparently. I should make my way over to that viewpoint because I do like mapping things out. There's apparently 30 chests here in Port of Prince. But yeah, so since we did 100% AC4, I may well 100% this as well. I'm thinking about it. It's been a long time since I played this, if you exclude the meme run. <laughs> it has been a long time. Welp. Welp. Thank goodness the guards in this game are as oblivious as they are. Hi. <laughs> Welp. They're just hella oblivious. <laughs> you love to see it. You start seeing me here. Yeah, you want to come check in the bushes? Maybe, maybe. Okay, well. And then we can go ahead and say... Do that. Do this. What the hell was even that? Uh. Can I knock him out, please? It like started playing the knockout animation and then what is going Can I not knock him out? What is going on? Uh. Hold on. Am I bugged? All right, tell you I couldn't attack him at first there. Wait, why is it still showing him as alive on the map? It still shows him like... Um, I think I'm not bugged now, but that guy is. It still shows him like on the map as like a red dudo. Okay, I'm not bugged anymore, but he is. That is very odd. Um, we've already found our first... Our first bug here, I guess. That's um certainly something. Well, we got a chest over here. We're still doing fine. Yeah, it still shows up on the map and stuff like that. Yeah, we're breaking the game within five minutes. Welcome to Ubisoft games, I guess. My oh my. That's also part of the reason why I have so much fun with them. It's also kind of the thing. Because like, whoa. Darn it. Because most of the time when I run into bugs in these games it's usually not something that like completely destroys the game experience and like ruins all the fun it's more so just like what the hell why did that happen you know and then i laugh at it and stuff so <laughs> i will happily take freaking assassin's creed bugs most days there have been some annoying ones but most of them are just funny most at least not all the time but a lot of them are so uh okay all right our first viewpoint here that's synchromanize. It's so pretty. It's so awesome that the Switch can, you know, run this and stuff, you know? Also, I just realized I could put my hat up higher. This is like one of the, the only playthrough, really, where I don't wear my hat. So I can just chill her on the side instead. Whoa, there's actually a different whistle. There's actually a different whistle. They use the exact same whistle in freaking Assassin's Creed 3, Liberation, and AC4. But there's actually a different whistle in this one. I don't remember there being a different whistle, like playing this in the past, unless I'm losing my mind. There's no way they added a whistle just for the freaking Switch version unique to Atawale. I don't think they would. I don't think so. Favorite bug is some dead bodies that were speaking in three. We also had that happen in this. We freaking took out one story person and then he freaking T-posed on the ground and was taunting me and stuff. But I think that the, my favorite bug that we've, since we're going through every Assassin's Creed game on this channel in order, excluding mobile apps, excluding apps we're going through every game in this series in order my favorite one has probably been one that we ran into literally in the first session of the first game on the first viewpoint and the first leap of faith to jump into the haystack i freaking collided with the haystack like it was a stack of bricks and i died like i didn't go into the hay i just landed on top of it like it was a solid object and all tight just immediately died and this was literally in the first session the very first leap of faith in this entire freaking assassin's creed series of every game in order the first haystack was made of bricks 
and I'm never gonna forget that. I was, <laughs> I was so flabbergasted. I think once the time comes, once eventually, it's probably gonna be a couple of years from now still, once we get through every single Assassin's Creed game in order, I'm probably gonna make like a best of all the glitches along the way. Is what I'd honestly like to do. But that's gonna be like a good while from now. Game was like words are hard, get good, noob. That's basically what it felt like happened there. But yeah, I mean, I've already been doing like a funny moments compilation for every AC game so far. So, whoa. Okay, now they're just surrendering. Cool, because we took out 20. Sweet. Um, Yeah, I could definitely make my see myself making like a best of all the clips across the entire series. But like, it's still definitely going to be, you know, a year or two before we get through the rest. All right, liberation rewards. Oh, so you get different rewards. So instead of these being like craftables with like hunt things that you hunt, like with Edward, I guess it's based on how many slaves you liberate, you get different rewards here. So we got rope dart pouch one, so we can probably get 10 rope darts now instead of five. And then there's smoke bomb pouch one, dart pouch one, experto cred appearance. Oh yeah, that's like the weird name of his ship. I prefer the name Jackdaw myself, but... Um, Ironclad Ram, Blunderbuss Ammo Pouch, one, Fire Crapper, for the, yeah, Fire Crapper Bag, one, Steel Forge Machete, Portable Cannon, what, like, freaking Sly 3, like, the flashlight guards would use in that? Alright, so this is an abandoned plantation now. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a while still before we get through, like, the whole series in order. Like, we've made, over the course of this almost year and a half that this has been in progress so far, some good progress, because we did... Assassin's Creed 1, whatever that weird, like, PSP Altair thing. No, we did a freaking DS one, and then a PSP one that both followed Altair. Then we did Assassin's Creed 2. Then we did Assassin's Creed 2 Discovery on the DS, because I was crazy enough to be like, yep, every game in this series except for mobile apps really does mean every game in this series except for mobile apps. And those DS games are some of the worst games I've ever played. Um, so we did that. Then Brotherhood. Then Revelations, then three, then four that we just 100 percented with the last session. Now we're on Freedom Cry. So this is already like very good progress across this year and a half of a lot of games. So what's left is this, then Rogue, Unity, Syndicate, and then the freaking... And I've played all of those before. I never actually beat Syndicate. I played like half of it. And then the new trilogy, like the ones where it's like really embraced RPGs and stuff. I've never actually played any of those before playing them on this channel. And this series will be my first time doing them of Origins to Odyssey to Valhalla. And I've heard some spicy things about them. So I'm definitely looking forward to eventually trying them. But we have so many other games to get through. But, you know, considering everything we've done so far, we're like maybe halfway. So maybe another year and a half of doing. I mean, I also committed really hard to it. At the beginning of last year, whereas nowadays it's like way more chill. I'm taking it much more slowly, so it might actually take longer than that. Jailers are looking for runaway slaves and will call for help if they see you. But now they can't see me. <gasps> There's an axe! But yeah, did you know that the Assassin's Creed trailer had your characters a crossbow, but they moved a month before release because they weren't invented yet? I did actually know that. It's one of those little known kind of fact things. Yeah, the first trailer for Assassin's Creed 1, which had Altair with the crossbow taking out one of the guards on that freaking stockade or whatever the hell, where they were doing the hanging. He comes up, shoots one dude with a crossbow, then does like the jump and stab into the other dude. And people were like, unbelievable, you're making a freaking historical game and... People didn't have crossbows here yet. How could you do that? So while Altair was planned to have like a ranged weapon of a crossbow, they had to take that out. But they did later then use that same crossbow idea for for Ezio. Like he didn't have the crossbow in AC2. He did have throwing knives and he did have the hidden gun, which was pretty cool. But then from Brotherhood, they did add the crossbow since they, you know, planned to a while back anyway with Altair. And I really like the crossbow in Brotherhood. I miss it. I miss that silenced ranged weapon. Like, I think things like the blowpipe for, like, sleep and berserk darts are pretty cool. But, you know, I really like the freaking crossbow that Ezio had. You gonna attack? Okay, thanks. Okay. Welp. You have to locate a gentle... Oh, yeah, I remember doing this in our freaking meme run. Oh, nice camera there. You too must help your brothers and sisters. But, yeah. Still don't know why they didn't give him a bow and arrow then. Now that you freaking mentioned that, that makes me want Altair to have had a bow and arrow now. That would have been so cool. Like, I liked it with Connor, but, you know, AC3 when it first came out didn't have, like, you know, the whole free aim 
kind of thing that AC4 had. Imagine freaking bow free aim. Like, I guess the Switch version technically has free aim and the remastered version, but like, freaking hitting anywhere seems to do the same amount of damage. Unless I was losing my mind. So like the free aim thing didn't really feel that that impactful at all within with an AC3 in their quote unquote remastered version. Um, let's go ahead and do this. But yeah, if Altair had a bow, that would have been really cool, especially considering there were plenty of guards on the roofs in AC1 that did have bows and such. That would have been really neato. All right, maybe we should get the viewpoint father, but there's stuff right here. But there's things. What? This one's actually on the roof. I guess I should have known from, you know, the way that it was on the map and such. Falcon kick, okay. Then we have another thing, Bob, over here. Nice, land right beside it. We gotta loot all the chests, all of them. Did that still show the seven for a hot second of like the previous chest I opened? Slight UI bug, I guess. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Um, hi. Okay, well, can I loot please? Thank you. All right, well, so yeah, there's a lot of side activities within this all about liberating slaves and such. Yeah, get out of here. Make your ancestors proud. Yeah, go skedaddle. Go skedaddle and stuff. So we have to locate a gentleman somewhere within this green circle. I almost said green square. But yeah, I wish they kept it. Doesn't have to be historically accurate. If it's a game, it's not like there was Templars versus Essence as a thing anyway. Yeah, and I mean, they also do like their whole lore of, you know, the whole first civilization piece of Eden, yada yada kind of lore that they build up and such anyway. But like the... I guess the gentleman saw me. But for like the general story that they tell, I do also want to generally like showcase the time period and what it was like in that time as best they can. But in my class that we took on the use of history in video games, we also talked about how games will make arguments in what they choose to include and exclude. Like if you're making a game set in the past, for example, and you choose, oh, come on, we have to do this. So oh, wait, it's a slightly different thing. Um, if you're making a game set in the past, then you're in a way making arguments by like what you choose to include and what you choose to exclude. Because, like, if there's a part of that history in the time period and you don't include it, then that's basically like saying, okay, this isn't important enough to showcase. And stuff that you do include, it's like, okay, this is important enough to showcase in, like, our story and our world and stuff like that. Is the thing. Boop. But yeah, I mean, Templars are a thing, but Assassins you're not sure about. I think, and I'm pretty sure this is the reason why AC Origins is in Ancient Egypt. Apparently, there was something very similar to the Assassins within these games within, like, Ancient Egypt. Something like that is, like, the closest thing, Bob, from what I hear, at least. But, like, it wasn't around for a super long time, I don't think. It wasn't, like, some, you know, ancient organization that went on to exist for thousands of years and be across the world or yada yada but there was something similar ish around then and ac origins which is supposed to be like the origin story of the of the assassins and such i'm pretty sure that's why it's set within that time period even though you know they then portray a complete oh you're the dude i need to tail oh but yeah like with i assume this is battlefield one when they include parachutes even though they weren't used until years after the war hmm I mean, yeah, there's also case... I mean, I've never actually played a Battlefield game myself. At least I assume that's what it stands for. But, I mean, there are also situations where it's like, realism or what's more fun? But, as well, when you are within a historical kind of setting, it's like, how do you want to portray this time period and such? Like, the Apple of Eden thing doesn't exist. Oh, but it... It's in, like, my fruit basket upstairs right now. It totally does. Just you... Just you wait and see. I'm freaking yoink my apple out of the fruit bowl. And then it controls the minds of everybody around. <laughs> or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Battlefield 1. Gotcha, gotcha. Boop. I mean... Boop. A lot of things also depend on, like, what you want to target for, like, realism as well. Like, do you want to target, like, the technology that exists no in the time? Or, like, the actual gameplay systems and how they work? Like, what? Like, when it comes to our use of history in video games class. We used, I believe it was Battlefield 1 or at least some other Battlefield game to like, to showcase how people will target the social and cultural aspects of a game when judging its realism, but not 
like the way that the world actually works and the game mechanics and stuff like that the difference between historical justification and historical context yeah i guess it's a it's a very tricky kind of subject when it comes to games but when we were talking about battlefield within my class something that we brought up is like how people will judge it like based on the way that it portrays history but never judge you know the way that the world actually works in that game as our professor then shows a clip of like somebody being on the ground and this plane like swing i don't know if it was battlefield one or some other battlefield game but this plane comes by like super close to him and it looks like the plane's about to hit him and then he just climbs into the tail gunner's seat like directly climbing through the propeller and such so it's very interesting how when people judge like the realism of video games and such they'll target like the social and cultural aspects kind of like the history surrounding it if it's a historical game but never like the physical rules of the world themselves and such where that might not necessarily be a bad thing because one would be clearly intended to be showcased one way and uh, the other is just like oh this is how it wound up turning out i guess but it's still a fascinating thing to think about how we naturally latch on to those parts of games for like oh whether it's realistic or not but not oftentimes the actual gameplay itself like freaking doing a leap of faith into a stack of hay is unrealistic for example but you know it makes the experience better and <laughs> stuff like that it lets you do something cool so yeah i do think that there is like a bit of difference between you know showcasing something for the sake of trying to showcase that world and the way that things were as opposed to you know doing something that's just more fun and game. i don't know if i'm making any sense here when to school for history and you will stretch history if it's believable compared to say having women who had prosthetics fighting in world war ii which really didn't happen something very interesting when we did we did actually talk about that in our use of history in video games class and what we talked about around that is the type of prosthetic that was shown in whatever trailer was actually something that there had been a patent for beforehand like it was something that technically existed already and as for women fighting in world war ii it might not have been portrayed in like the same way as that portray like i've never played a battlefield game before i'm not sure exactly how it portrayed it but it might not have been the exact same way but within world war ii there were actually several several regiments of women in in several places fighting in the war and such so it's not necessarily that women didn't have a part in the history of the time is that they were erased from it because they're not the ones that were written about which is very interesting food for thought where's the chest here like it probably wasn't like in the same way that you know i don't know how i don't know how it's portrayed in battlefield but no freaking open the open the thing i don't know how it's portrayed in battlefield if it's just like you know mixed gender regiments or something like that which i don't believe there was but there were definitely regiments of women within the second world war so it would have been interesting if in something like battlefield that was something that was shown i don't know whether it is or not never played battlefield but hi hi i guess we're fighting here now but well that would have been interesting if it portrayed stuff like that that's not oftentimes talked about because it's not just games that make arguments by choosing to include or exclude things but even people who are writing you know textbooks and telling history of the time and stuff like that like wah like for example the fact that nobody ever really talks about women fighting in world war ii is because you know people didn't consider that as important and that's not the things that people write about because they were like oh that's not as important to like these other things so it's not just games that make arguments about history by choosing to include or exclude things but anybody who's really you know writing a textbook or telling portrayals and stuff like that like there's always going to be some biases and things that people think are important things that people think aren't as important and it just has to do with the person's recounts views and stuff like that um but yeah russian battalions of death which are whole battalions of women soldiers of the night witches were a fight group of women i never knew like the names i just knew that it was like a thing that did happen here and there claimed that women fought with, with like americans or british in the front lines yeah if that's how it was portrayed in battlefield then yeah that's probably not you know probably not the case like i'm not i'm not an expert in the in the field but yeah that sounds like it wouldn't exactly be the case it would have been really cool to have you know games set in that time period actually showcasing like these lesser known things something closer to the way that they happened but since you know there isn't a lot of sources that you know pay as much attention to these sort of things for because they just are like oh that's surely not as important when you know it's still a key part of the history and such so it'd be neat to have games and other other tellings of it actually showcase that part of things but 
Enjoy yourself, sir. You know, feel not, I feel like sometimes there's a lot of games that try to tell a form of history or portray things a certain way and sometimes miss the mark a little bit in terms of, you know, what they could have been telling, if that makes sense. So, I kind of remember telling you from our little meme run that we did in the past, but it is honestly a really fascinating subject. Go up there. I think my use of history in video games class was probably, like, one of my favorite classes I've ever taken. Like, ever in, <laughs> in any, in any school. Welp, we gotta go do that. Once again, your focus was around the world, world wars, and it hurts your mind because it's almost painting this false reality of what actually happened, what with like the different accounts of it. Like, do you mean, when you say painting a false reality of like what actually happened, do you already talk about Battlefield specifically in that case? Because yeah, I've never played Battlefield before myself, but yeah, it is definitely, Definitely interesting the way that games can tell certain histories. I actually wrote an essay on Assassin's Creed 2 that I also turned into a video on my channel later down the line. And for this class, we needed to write an essay on a game, on a historical game, for how it abstracts the past, essentially. Like, what does it make up that's fictional? In what ways does it tell the past and such? And the professor said it should be a game that you're at least, like, familiar with, but maybe you haven't played before. Or maybe you haven't played a whole lot of before. Like, just have it be something that you're not in love with, because if you write on a game that you are, like, already in love with, then you might just rant on and on about what you love. So I decided, that's when I started this whole series, actually, of every Assassin's Creed game in order. So we started with AC1, and then Assassin's Creed 2 was the one that I wrote my essay on because I had heard a lot of good things about that game, and I had played it a little bit in the past, and I really didn't like it. And then I played it for this channel, and I thought the game was great, and I was like, why didn't I like this in the past? This game is so good. <laughs> but but I wrote my essay on that game, and this, do this isn't just the case for Assassin's Creed 2, but I typically find is the case for Assassin's Creed games in general. Something I find very fascinating about the way that Assassin's Creed games tell history is that they usually tell it in such a way that history happened the way that it did because of, like, the events within the game or because of the main character. Like, within the case of Assassin's Creed 2, certain historical events would unfold the way that they did because Ezio was there and Ezio did X thing. So, it was a very interesting way of portraying things, not just within Assassin's Creed 2, but within the series in general, where it typically tells history where it'll have the same outcomes at the end of the day, but sometimes the causes will be for, like, a slightly different or even completely different reason, which is very interesting, a very interesting way to tell history. It was interesting having that deep dive into seeing how Assassin's Creed games tell stories and such.